A deep dive on diamonds. So focusing specifically on the process of producing synthetic diamonds, there are two methods to do this. The first is using high pressure or a high temperature process. This is the first method developed to create synthetic diamonds and it is developed in the 1950s. These diamonds are usually used for industrial purposes and this is the most intuitive method as it mimics the Earth's natural way of creating diamonds. The next method is chemical vapor deposition. These diamonds are usually used for jewelry purposes. Going more in depth, the high pressure, high temperature process requires a capsule containing a carbon starting material such as graphite, a mixture of metals called a metal flux and a small diamond seed. The capsule is then placed in a specifically designed press and this is heated to temperatures of 1,300 to 1,600 degrees Celsius. This is then compressed with pressures of 59,200 atm or atmospheric pressures. This dissolves the carbon into the metal flux and it forms a mixture of iron, nickel, and cobalt. This basically helps the diamond itself form when the carbon source crystallizes around the diamond seed. This process takes from up to days to weeks at a time to produce a single diamond. Important innovations that were created in order to allow this process to be possible, there are three machines commonly used. So the first is the belt press. This is the first press that was used for diamond production and this uses two anvils to apply pressure to the top and bottom of the diamond. As you can see in the top right corner, that is what the belt press looks like. The cubit press uses six angle anvils and can apply greater pressure. And this is used to work with larger cubic materials. Um, as you can see, it's in the top left. The split sphere press or bars uses eight outer anvils and six smaller anvils. The capsule is then placed into an oil filled barrel to accelerate heat transfer. As you can see, it's on the bottom right corner and it's in a spherical shape. This is um, arguably the best method as it is able to achieve higher temperatures and pressures quickly. The second method to produce lab-grown diamonds is chemical vapor deposition or CVD. In this case, a chamber is required. This chamber is evacuated down to a high vacuum to prevent contamination and then it is filled with a mixture of gases including hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon-rich gases like methane. Next, a substrate is added, or a thin slice of diamond seed, and the chamber is then heated to 800 to 900 degrees Celsius, in many ways, including using microwaves, lasers, or hot filament. By heating the chamber, this lets the carbon precipitate out of the mixture of gases and crystallize around the diamond seed. In this case, technicians have to periodically check for and remove graphite that is crystallized. This can take days to weeks, but its advantage is that many diamonds or stones can be grown at the same time in the same chamber. Treatments. Most synthetic diamonds don't come out the perfect color or clarity. So diamonds produced by both HPHP, HPHT and CVD undergo treatments to reach their desired color or clarity before they can be sold on the market. Some examples include heat treatments with boron turn HPHT diamonds blue and ones with nickel turn the diamonds green. Radiation treatments create pink or red diamonds. CVD diamonds usually come out brown or yellow and they require heat treatment. Major barriers to the growth of synthetic diamonds. While synthetic diamonds are an inventive innovation, there are still barriers to them becoming commonplace in the diamond market. The first one is price. While most synthetic gems have a large price margin compared to their authentic counterparts, synthetic diamonds only have a 2 to 20% decrease in price. This isn't incentive enough for synthetic diamonds to become um, the best alternative to their authentic counterparts, so most people still resort to buying normal diamonds. In addition, um, only around 1 million synthetic diamonds are produced compared to a ratio of 58 million authentic diamonds produced from diamond mines. The second ma major barrier is distribution. 
It's hard for normal people if they go to a normal jewelry store to have access to a wide selection of synthetic diamonds and the customer usually chooses authentic diamonds instead. Thank you for listening to my presentation and I hope you learn more about the production of synthetic diamonds today.